tell the world I'm coming home. Let the rain wash away all the pain. Of I figured it'd be fun to be a teenager and everything. You can have all the parties and then have all these friends. And it'd just be wonderful. You're the most popular kid in school. Tell the world I'm coming. Well, school became a larger responsibility. Uh, I realized I had to be an example to my friends that were younger than me. Um, I had to be an example to my little sisters. Uh, I mean, I, don't, I never really had much responsibility until I left home and then everything became a bigger deal. I mean, school was a bigger deal with my grandparents and with my parents. And it's never too late. Yeah, I've had to give up some things that I would like to do. Um, uh, I had to grow up when I was younger because of um, my parents' choices. I had to take the place of my parents. Yes, I did. I um, I got them up for school in the morning. I I made sure they were dressed. I made sure they got to school. I made sure dinner was done. That was my job because my brother wasn't much help. Yeah, I've been at least in my eyes and in some of the teachers' eyes, I've been more mature than a lot of my peers. I had to mature a lot faster, so I'm afraid that when I'm older, I'm gonna be mature, I'm gonna be immature and stupid. Go to college and, ah, let's do stupid stuff, like go in the bouncy Digital house and crap. by then? Huh? You'll be free of anything by then? You know, I'll be living by myself, but I'll still do stupid stuff like wanna go to bouncy houses. <laughs> I don't care how old I am, I'm still gonna go into bouncy houses. <laughs> Definitely. Um I don't really know. I didn't really have much of a childhood. I really worried about my sisters. Uh, I've always worried about them. Can't tell them that though. But uh, I was really worried about him. Uh, I remember when I was a kid, I was really worried about foster care because that was a big problem in my life. Now I'm coming home. Things don't seem so bad. So, when I was a little kid, I always wanted to be really big because I always wanted to do what adults did. I always wanted to do the things they did. And now that I'm this age, I don't like it. I actually love it. Although it seems like no one feels the same. Well, I had to take care of my seven children. No, I'm just playing. Um, I had to practically nothing. Just a free man. Yeah, I'm, since like now I'm older, I have to work, so so I have to finish working so I can hang out. So yeah, that's a sacrifice. Yes, we do. And the most we lose it is in school. Because other kids already lost their innocence, probably, and if the guy that didn't lose their innocence is getting their bad influence from their friends, their peers. Can you please get out? I'm getting interviewed. Oh, of course. Of course I would. Ain't that the way of this whole damn thing? Trying to. Well, like everything, um, I had to cook, clean. I was um, mommy, babysitter, everything, all the above. From fourth grade on. Nobody's gonna hold you. Absolutely. I had
had to, when I was a freshman in high school, had no allowance, I had to work, I had to pay 100% of my clothes, shampoo, makeup, anything. 100%. Absolutely, because I had to grow up by the time I was 10. Teenage with Ruthless Innocence, um, yeah, I would say that there's so much pressure to be one of the crowd that a lot of teenagers lose their innocence way too early, instead of being their own person. Just trying to show you something. No, I was um, I was one of I related to the real popular kids and not so popular kids. I was kind of the you know in between person. Would I change anything? Absolutely not. Because I wouldn't change anything. Go ahead. I wouldn't change anything because um, it's made me a strong person. It's made me who I am. Every single every single adventure, every single challenge, every single hurdle I had to jump across made me a strong person that I am. Oh yeah. <laughs> Not one that I can talk about though. <laughs> Probably good because this is on the show in front of everybody. <laughs> That's a secret. <laughs> you know, that's a hard one because the mistakes that I've made have helped me learn and if you don't make mistakes then you'll never learn what's the right way to do it so probably not hmm. very mischievous um, rule breaker uh, I think I was very smart I s graduated in three years so um, yeah I was just I was always doing something always had to discover stuff you know in the summer times I used to get those workbooks and I do the whole thing without without even getting up uh, for playing we created a school I even made all my records and so I was just always very 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 busy very busy boredom is not in my vocabulary never was you have to say I figured it would be carefree and fun I had a younger brother and sister, and my mom worked, and my dad worked, and so I had to take care of them um, until they came home, and then we always had a set of chores. So every day, mom had a list of chores that she expected us to take care of, and it was household chores. You months ago. No, I don't think so, because my mom and dad felt very strongly throughout high school that uh, your job was to be a student, not to have a job outside of that. So we weren't allowed to work during school. We weren't allowed to hold a, a job during school, but we were expected to work and hold a job during the summer. Yeah, under certain circumstances, I think so. Um, there was a time when my parents were considering getting a divorce and they were separated and I had to act as the adult female figure in the house for a little while when I was in high school and because of my younger brother and sister. And so that was, um, that was a little <coughs> difficult, you know having to do that, having to give up certain things, you know, going out with my friends or doing something fun. I think so. I think they're kind of, they're so bombarded with adult content in terms of media, movies, video games, that that sometimes they don't know what it's really like to be childlike. They're just kind of like miniature adults. I mean, you see parents dress their five-year-olds in outfits that are meant for, yeah, and makeup that, that are meant for older kids. You have shows like Toddlers and Tiaras that just make me want to vomit, really. I mean, you got these little kids that are dressed as miniature adults, and that's not okay. necessarily outcasted from my peers because of that kind of role but because I didn't ever feel like I fit in 
Oh yeah, I, if I could go back to, most people are like, I would never go back to high school. I would never go back to high school and do it over unless I had the same knowledge that I have now. If I could be the same person I am now in a 16 year old body and have to relive that, oh heck yeah, I would survive so much better, but. As a child growing up, I would say that I was fairly shy. Um, awkward. I have trip over my own feet constantly, <laughs> Mr. Poozie, and um, and Mr. Christopher right here. <laughs> Mr. I have a class of my own children here. Can't escape them. Um, but I would say that I was shy and awkward. I spent more time in my books. Um, I did a lot of things with my dad and my brother, and because uh, we'd go camping and fishing and hunting together and stuff. So I didn't really do a whole lot with my peers. They, I didn't fit in with my peers very well. So if by the time. Um, I had I was the oldest. And my parents were crazy, so I was kind of like the like the family counselor to the family as well, I guess, because my parents were crazy doing their own thing. Um, so for me, it was being the oldest and kind of watching over younger siblings, I guess, and uh, watching over the family unit as a whole, as well as kind of you know managing my own life. So those days are gone. Yeah, but I think that that's inevitable. Um, I I try as much as possible to kind of I don't know, not pretend that I'm still a kid, but I I try not to lose sight of that. Um, my mom was very like kind of youthful and never want to grow up, and we grew up kind of with a Peter Pan mentality of enjoy your childhood and rock and roll and have a good time. So I, I never really lost that. Um, but, uh, I mean, when you grow up, you, you lose a certain amount of that naivety, I guess. Um, so, yes, question mark? Don't you do it now? Um, I feel like less so than maybe in the past. Um, I, I feel like current generations, and maybe this is just my own viewpoints talking, um, I feel like most of what I see is more sheltered than most kids I knew when I grew up, when I was growing up. I feel like um, a lot of kids are kind of, uh, and I don't mean to say that the parents are, are like, like harming them because of this, um, but I think a lot of parents try to kind of protect their kids from things, and I think that, that um, causes them to sometimes get a lot further in their life without knowing uh, certain things and without being aware of certain realities. Uh, so maybe they're not quite as ready as they should be when they hit, you know, real life to be cliche. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, my parents split up when I was 13 and my little sister was eight, my little brother was six, so yeah. of that responsibility. Um, I was aware that I was different. I felt in a lot of ways more mature, like I'd seen and dealt with a lot more than a lot of my peers had, and I knew that to be true. Um, you know, and that might have been just my own arrogance growing up and assuming that everybody else's life was roses. But, um, <laughs> just to be clear, I, I, I had uh, plenty of my fair share of being outcasted, but it, I don't know that it was because or I felt it was because of me taking on adult roles. Um, I 
handled things differently. I was more aware of things and I was uh, quick to see things, maybe more than my peers, um, which sometimes led to me being on the outs. But, yeah. Uh, drop in the ocean. Uh, choosing to stand by and support my uh, support my dad when it when, when things got hard. Um, dad's a hardcore alcoholic, and uh, kind of I, I had a really tough time coming to terms with that and realizing how, like how to deal with that. It was kind of like two separate people, and so I kind of fought to hold on to that for a long time and kind of uh, try to deal with that, and I just refused to accept that I mean, in that. That really kind of opened my eyes up to that. Um, I, when I did kind of start to realize the situation, I guess, or what it was or how to deal with it, um, it definitely meant that I really didn't want anything to do with that in my life for a really long time. And I still don't really, I, I don't really drink it myself. Um, but that, that, that definitely affected kind of that, uh, naive innocence, I guess. I mean, not that that's a bad thing. I, it's not something I miss or that I, I feel like I'm missing out on. But um, it, it definitely kind of took away some of that naivety, I guess. But I'm holding you closer. No, I don't think so. Um, you know, honestly, I, I, I firmly believe that um, the mistakes that we make are just as important to us as our successes. Uh, I think that our mistakes um, perhaps more important because they're, they're what we learn from. Uh, it's hard to learn when you get something right the first time, when you get it wrong and you have to slam your face through it um, over and over and over to figure something out. Sometimes that's when we try to figure out shortcuts and we actually learn things. So uh, I would say no, I don't, I don't really have a lot of mistakes uh, that I regret or would change or do differently. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty happy. I, I think that the mistakes have caused me to turn out the way that I am, and I'm pretty stinking happy the way I am, so yeah, works out well. Together, it's like wishing for um, I was quick-witted, I was hyper, I was sarcastic, which got me into a lot of trouble, because uh, most of my friends did not really understand, and I pretty much came across as just being a big mean jerk. Uh, when I, I never really meant to be that way. I often told jokes that I thought were jokes and would interpret it such so, and then most other kids just got mad and thought I was being a jerk. So that didn't work out very well for me. Um, I had some really close friends that I hung out with all the time, and I read a lot, and you know we had a blast together, but I definitely, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't front and center during my grade school experience, that's for sure. Um, and then high school changed, and everybody kind of, I, I guess I became more comfortable with my sense of humor and mouth and quick wit, um, and found people that were like-minded, and went from kind of on the outs to somebody who is just kind of friends with everybody, uh, and got along well with everybody, and I had a blast in high school. I liked it. It was fun. I think innocence is that state we exist in before we before we're influenced by all that. Um, before before we've made up our minds, I guess. When it's just us making up our minds for ourselves. Uh, that we describe as innocence. Um, Having to change from being a kid to growing up in a short amount of time. It causes a lot of innocence. Innocence. Mm, innocence. When you are a young boy and you don't know anything about any wrong thing, any diabolic thing, any any sexual thing, when you're just a little kid that it's mine is clear of innocence. You're innocent of doing things. Um, I would say a loss of innocence is having to grow up too fast or seeing bad things happen either to yourself or to your friends or to your family that you as a child are not equipped to handle. It's something more along the lines of an adult is better able to handle. 
humility is not we lose that childlike wonder of the world and you get to see the world as it really is in a very harsh reality when you lose that innocence. Loss of innocence would be when nothing surprises you anymore, when like the F-bomb becomes normalcy. You know, things that are tragic, tragedies that become normalcy. For instance, um, one time we had to pull over a van because it was uh, when I was with the police department and inside was a mom with a gun and two kids. And the, the, one of the, the daughter pulled out this piece of paper from her pocket and like she had done this before. And here's my aunt phone number, go ahead and call her, she can pick us up again. And when she said that again, um, that was really rough. So that would be loss of innocence when you expect the worst.